Oh, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC, and I'm here with my son, Tyson. Hey, what's up? Ah, so welcome to the Boombastic show here at Titans of CNC. It's going to be an incredible week. We got every single day, Monday through Friday, we're going to have four episodes, four live episodes. We're going to give you live machining demonstrations. We're going to talk about incredible technology. We're going to bring in incredible industry prefer, uh, professionals to come in and actually speak about the technology and how to use it, when to use it, you know, application specific and all that. And it's going to be an incredible journey. So, uh, so, and one of the greatest things is we are live, so I can't mess up. We're just gonna have some fun, and uh, it's gonna be amazing. So, uh, as far as the machining goes, uh, put my son Tyson on the spot. What's up, Tyson? <laughs> What's up? You got a pretty cool part we're gonna be running up. Yeah, yeah, awesome. excited. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we just like, need to come in, and we just gotta be real, right? Uh, we've had the virus, we've had uh, a lot of things happening in our economy, a lot of people have suffered, we've been locked down, and uh, you know, the big conventions aren't happening, you know? So we actually went to our amazing partners and said, hey, you know, since the conventions aren't happening, let's just do something dynamic, let's do something fresh, like something boombastic, right? And actually do the machining and do, and give incredible discounts. So, through the whole process, you're gonna see discounts coming down below us. We have a landing page, titansofcnc.com promo, and uh, it's gonna specify the incredible deals. Deals like Doosan is giving 25 to 30% off, not their garbage machines, they don't have any garbage machines, but their best machines, the machines that everybody are purchasing, 25 to 30% off. We got discounts from Shunk, and Canna Metal, huge discounts from Canna Metal, Blazer, all of our partners, and it's going to be an amazing journey. And uh, to start it off, uh, on this particular session, we're going to actually machine a titanium part on this machine. Now, Tyson, cool story with Tyson is, Tyson started working about 18 years old with me. Yeah. We're doing a lot of aerospace work. And he actually worked with a great journeyman machinist that did all the programming. So for five years, he set up every single job for these complicated parts. And then one day, the journeyman machinist left and we had a huge amount of aerospace parts that needed to be done within weeks. And I basically went to my son and I said, hey, we're gonna actually throw you on Mastercam. We're gonna actually teach you how to do it I'm busy with my own parts, but you're just gonna have to run. And from that day forward, he actually dug in, he learned the software, he made incredible parts. And over the next 10 years has just been such an amazing, uh, you know, my son, but just such an amazing employee leader in the company and a guru, right? When it comes to the lathe work. Uh, one of the exciting things is that, you know, life is levels and machining is levels. So. He's actually gone from running regular lathes and big lathes to running live tooling, like the Puma 2600 over here, and actually bringing in some milling and stuff. And, and I, I always kind of pushed him towards the lathe because I was more of a mill guy, right? But now, he's, he was like joking with me the other day, and he's like, hey, Dad, since I'm a, a mill guy on the mill turn and a lathe guy, I should get paid like twice as much and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that, but like, it, you definitely deserve something because you're solving my problems and stuff. So today we're just going to be like really, really, you know, just candid about, you know, what it takes to actually run a machine like this, to wrap your head around a machine like this. I always tell people, whether it be aluminum, titanium, inconel, monel, there is a tool for the application. There is a machine for the application. The trick is to figure out efficiently what those tools are and what that process is so you can actually run and be successful and make money in this industry. So, Tice, you want to talk a little bit about like, like how different is this machine from the other machines that you're used oh, to? Oh, I mean, it's, it's, the lathe, po it's, the lathe portion is pretty similar, but then it, it's basically a mill with the upper, like the upper turret. You got like um, 80 tools. Yeah. <laughs> 80 yeah. mil tools. Yeah. 80, 80 mil tools. It's basically treating 
both of these tur turrets separately, so you load two programs in at once. Awesome. You have to prove out two programs. It's it sounds a lot, but then if you you know break it up between the two, like if you focus only on one when you're setting up, yeah. it's a lot easier. Yeah, I, I tell people a lot of like a programmer, a CNC programmer, just needs to be cool on the pressure. We need to look at a complicated part. We need to dissect it, and we just need to go step by step and actually just prioritize based on where it is in the process. And uh, if you do that and yeah, you're cool with it, you're just gonna make it happen. And so. you know, the mill stuff, a lot of it's new to me, but I have the best help in the world when it comes to it. Oh so. man, oh man. <laughs> I'm like, finally he's stepping into the mill. So we get to like talk about these like, you know, Harvey cutters for the titanium from can of metal and the speeds and feeds of service foot, the depths of cut and having some fun. And even last night, we were here late getting ready for this, and uh, it's been an uh, amazing journey. And uh, just now, just now, like, this is real. We're machining 6L4V titanium, so the, the part actually came, like, kind of crooked, right? Because it does. That's what happens in the real world, and you have to solve problems. So he told me minutes before with the camera, he's like, hey, I should actually face one side flip it just so I can get a nice bite on this thing. Of course, we got the chunk chuck, which like digs into it, but we don't want this thing rocking too much, right? And just in that, you were talking about like the G54. What are the three things that you were just telling me you have to change? Oh, so you have a G54 for both the lower and the upper turret. So something like this where you're moving in the part, you need to remember to move both of those G54s in, otherwise one's gonna be off and possibly crash. Cool. Um, and then also because I'm doing a chuck transfer, I had a G54 set to the front of my jaws, so I also have to make sure to move that in the same amount. Yeah, that's, that's one of the cool things is we're actually starting on this chuck right here, and then we're going to machine it, we're going to mill it, and then we're gonna do a chuck transfer into the second chuck and actually finish it off. And that's the whole thing with mill turns is you want to come out with a complete part. And with that, I figure, you know what, let's actually bring in our man Chris from Ellison to actually come and speak to this machine, the technology. What's up, Chris? Hey, How Ty, how's it going, man? How's uh, it going? Hey, uh, how's it going? Awesome. So our fans right out here. Uh, hey, guys. Students, machinists from all over the world and stuff. Uh, this is Chris, and he is an uh, amazing salt to earth earth type of guy <laughs> and all that and uh we're happy to have them so chris thanks a lot Tim. oh of course man so yeah i gave you the good intro man i uh, know i appreciate it man i appreciate <laughs> it so thank you we um when looking at a mill turn correct when looking at a mill turn um what are the some of the things that uh, why do people actually purchase these machines so again what you're doing like you're talking like you're talking about is you've got you've got the mill and you've got the lathe and it's combined you're hitting it all in one setup so this machine we're looking at and you've seen that you've talked about it it's nine axes so let's talk about that just for a second awesome. so in the head how about we move back let's, let's do and then go ahead this? and uh, just start we'll looking at the camera to explain the axis of movement go ahead Ty, so you can perfect so if we got in the head up here we've got the z axis we've got X coming up and down, and we've got Y coming in and out across the part. That's your, that's your milling head. That's like your, your three-axis mill. Then we have a B-axis going back and forth like this, so you can hit those angles on either side. So that's four axes up in the head. Then we've got our lower turret. This is like just a two-axis lathe with live tooling on there. So we've got the Z-axis, and then we've got the X-axis, like you would have on a Puma lathe with the bolt-on live tools, regular, regular turning tools. And then we've got the A-axis, which is actually that sub-spindle moving in and out to help you grab those longer or shorter parts if you want to do, use both to turn the part. And then you've got the C-axis one, which is then becomes your fifth axis. If you're using it in conjunction with up here, you've got four plus one. You've got a five-axis mill on the main. And then on the sub, you've got another C-axis. We've got a five-axis mill on the sub as well. So you've got turning, you've got three axis milling, and you've got two five axis setups within one machine. Awesome. A couple couple things to mention is like, this this spindle on the mill is a beast. And like, what's the horsepower? Maybe so explain. So this is a thir 35 horsepower. I'm just gonna jump over this side. This is a 35 horsepower, 12,000 RPM spindle. So it's it's not like your lathe tools. On your on your lathe with live tooling, you know, maybe it's maybe it's five, seven thousand RPM, ten horsepower or so. 
This is a 35 horsepower, 12,000 RPM, true milling spindle. So talking about your, your, your Monels, your Titaniums, your Inconels, you can get after it with it. This is a true, true milling spindle. And then with it, I heard you guys talking about it, you've got 80 tool magazine, tool changing. So again, with a, with a live tooling lathe, each one of these becomes an attachment that you're gonna be taking on and off, right? If you've got a part and you've got to drill it, you've got to tap it, maybe you've got to ream some holes, you've got some angled holes, you very quickly run out of, uh, of these spaces, right? Absolutely. And these, these units, they're not inexpensive units, right? And you have to service them. Whereas tool changing mill, you've got 80 tools. You say, hey, I need to do a 37 and a half degree angle, programming it, and boom, yeah. and it goes, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Not not boom like you're crashing the machine, but no, like no, no, boom, no, no. like we're, we're solving problems, <laughs> right. making it happen, like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, he was talking about the, the tools and stuff. Magazines, you got 40 tools in this magazine. You got 40 tools in this one, and uh, and it's great. Another thing that I'll mention is that this is a, a nice part, titanium, 604B, but we can actually put some beast parts. I think we're about like a couple feet diameter and five feet long in this particular machine, right? Correct, yeah, two, about two feet wide, five feet long, hold it over the whole width of the machine, machine that whole piece, but you gotta remember as steady well. Steady rest. Steady rest, but you gotta remember that there's smaller ones of these and there's bigger ones of these. Yeah, yeah. And this is, again, you've, there's so much flexibility with this platform of machining. It just combines so much, reduce all that setup, takes out all that waste. That's what that's what you're looking for, right? Absolutely. So, so who is the customers that actually look at that looks at these this technology? You're talking big aerospace companies. Anybody that actually have like you know big valves and di different pieces where they just want to like bas basically press go and have a complete part come out and then put more material in and just complete nonstop. Yeah, exactly, and it's. But to your point, though, it's not, it's not just the huge aerospace companies of the world. It's not just the Boeings and the Airbuses. Yeah. It's, hey, if you, if, even if you've got a job shop and you're finding that, hey, I'm, I'm taking parts from the lathe, I'm putting them over to the mill, I'm, ha you know, I'm changing out these live tool holders on my, on my turning machine. Hey, if you're just making tubes with, with flats around them and holes and maybe some, some, um, some profile cuts, this machine takes all that setup, all that labor, all that waste out of it, and ultimately it makes you more profitable. Absolutely, and, and, and you're thinking about it, like as a machine shop owner, you know, I'm always thinking about time is money, right? And, and we want to run the machines long, so we want to look at automation, and, and later on we're going to talk about robots and programming robots and, and how to like move the, the shunk chucks and get everything to work automated. And in the same way, this is a machine that you program it, you get it all set up, and then it runs, and you walk away from it, and you can run a different machine, and uh, just true efficiency. And once you get the thing dialed, it's just dialed and perfected. Keeps and running. Keeps, keeps running. Keeps all running. Right? Absolutely. So I think uh, we, now we talked about the machine. Thank you, brother. Boom. Boom. Now, one thing I'm going to do, you know, I want to bring in Michael from Shunk. What's up, Michael? Hey, Titan. My boy How's right there. So, so Mike is with Shunk, and we actually work a lot together. Like, I'll, I'll need, like, problems solved, and I'll, I'll just text him. I'll call him at all hours of the night, especially since I'm Pacific and he's on the East Coast. But uh, he always answers the call, and then I'll just FaceTime, and I'll be like, hey, what about this? What about that? And he always comes with a solution, and it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we were here last night, and we were just talking about it. Uh, you can have a machine... You know, an amazing piece of equipment that you bring into your facility, and uh, and it's and it's amazing, right? But we have to think about all the different variables. So when it comes to the different variables, we have to think about okay, you bought an amazing machine, but what's the chuck? Like, what's the pressure? How do the teeth dig in? Like, what's the rigidity like? So the, you have to have great work holding to have a success in a machine like this. And that's why every time we bring in an actual great technology, we bring in the work holding to couple it for success. So Mike, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about the chucks, why they're different. Uh, I can clearly see some differences. We'll just talk to the camera and point, at, point everything out. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, cool. thanks for having me. Of course, man, thank you. 
So, um, yeah, just like you said, um, the machine is a big investment, and we want to make sure that when you're making a big investment like this, the work holding has got to match, uh, and the work holding is critical. So with a big investment, you want to make sure that investment stays running. So what we put on here, this first chuck on the main spindle is our THW Plus chuck. Uh, and this THW Plus, it's a quick jaw change chuck. Okay. And, and so the reason for that, the reason that came about is, um, you know, they've been around for a little while, but now they're becoming more and more popular, um, especially because people are wanting to do lower part run sizes. I mean, that's the same thing you guys are seeing here. When you say quick change, some people might not know exactly what that is. Can you explain the process and the time that you save on every operation? Yeah, for sure. So basically what it is, is normally when you're changing the jaws on a chuck, you're having to unscrew the bolts and take the jaws off of the master jaw. And if they're bored jaws, for example, you're going to need to re-indicate where, where those jaws are. Or maybe even um, return them, re-bore the jaws. Exactly. Uh, so the idea with this chuck is, you know, for example, we've got claw jaws on there right now for the first operation to really bite into the material. Um, and one common way a lot of people use a chuck like this is they've got claw jaws for the clamping on the raw material, and then they just can quick change that, and I'll explain that in just a second, and then go to uh, some soft board jaws. And the nice thing is, is because you're not, the way the quick change works is we've actually got a little, um, uh, wrench right here that you can just stick the Allen wrench in there, turn it a quarter turn or so, slide the jaw out, and once you've done that, you can slide the new jaw back in. There's also a safety mechanism to prevent you from being able to take the wrench out when there's no jaw in there. Mm, that's nice, that's nice. And it, <clears throat> and it also has to engage with the new jaw um, before you can take the wrench out as well. So until that engagement takes place, you can't take the jaw out, or sorry, yeah. you can't, uh, yeah, take the wrench out. So, um, you're taking, so every single time you set up a, a new job, you go from like, you know, 10 to 30 minutes depending down to like four minutes. Exactly, right. yeah. So you're Great. talking really good cost savings there. Um, oh. And that, you know, that's not even accounting for needing to rebore the jaws and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, exactly like you just said. Yeah, one of the things that I'll, I'll point out is that, you know, he was talking about the teeth. They joke around, a lot of shops call it the vampire jaw. <laughs> because they, it just digs right into the material. So this is titanium, it's a hard material, but uh, it was important for us to dig into that material. As you can see, we have a mill that's gonna mill all across the top of the material. And there's nothing down here, right? It's not big enough for us to use a steady rest. So there's nothing down here. So we wanted to bite into it over here to just force that rigidity so we can still get over here and actually do a lot of good machining. And uh, yeah, amazing engineering, amazing uh, job. And uh, thanks brother for the support, man. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you guys ready to see some CNC machining? And then as we're machining, we'll just go ahead and kind of walk through the process. And uh, Tice, before, and one thing is like, when we finish with this, we're gonna actually take the videos and we're gonna put them on our Aerospace Academy. Again, this is great technology. We'll probably put it on our regular Academy and Aerospace Academy. It's great for general engineering. It's great for uh, aerospace. And we're gonna put up uh, the tool list so you can actually click on each tool from Canametal and actually see exactly what we actually uh, use to program it. Uh, wanted to mention Canametal. Canametal has an amazing end mill. The end mills that we're using um, they have an amazing program right now for the Harvey, the Harvey 3, the Harvey 1 TE, and the Core 5. Instead of the, and they've dropped the price starting at $41 for some of the best end mills in the history of the world. Like they're amazing. You guys, again, you can watch our Aerospace Academy to see us using those end mills efficiently in titanium, in Monel, in steel and aluminum and all of it. And uh, with that, uh, Tyson, maybe talk a little bit about the application, how we're going to start out. Yeah, so um, we're going to be switching between lathe ops and mill ops. We're going to start by turning the part, roughing it out. Um, then we're going to have the uh, shell mill or the face mill come in. We're going to put a uh, big hex around the part. After that, we're going to run the finish op again with the uh, lower turret. And each time, the upper and lower turret, they're just going to be taking turns. So lower turret's going to come in, do some lathe work, 
when it's done, it's going to come back, mill turrets going to come down, do some mill work. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Um, then we'll, we have um, these group, these slots going around the part, kind of at a spiral. It's kind of a cool, because cool it, little Then it angle. turns into a five axis, So right? it's going to be doing some five axis work. So I have a uh, bullnose end mill, um, a Harvey one coming in. It's going to rough out those slots. And then I have a Harvey 3 ball mill coming in to um, do some ball tracking and finish up those slots. Awesome, awesome. Um, and you know, I, you know what's fun is that, uh, like, you know, we're on camera, right? So <laughs> I could, we could have just started with an aluminum part or something else, but I'm like, I'm like Tyson, I'm gonna have you step right into that machine. Your first program is gonna be titanium because people are gonna call us out if we're not running something legit and then we're gonna do it live. So if you break a tool, if the part comes out, if anything happens, you're gonna be live in front of the world. Just a little bit of pressure. Just a little bit of pressure, right? But like I told you, I said, we're gonna come in, we're gonna have a great week. And uh, at the end of that, we're gonna look back at a body of work and it's gonna be an amazing thing. And we did a huge uh, service to the industry. It's gonna and, be great. Uh, <laughs> love you, you're gonna do great. Now all the pressure's on him. So I'll let uh, Tyson kind of take it away and then we'll just kind of speak to the application. And uh, yeah, and Chris, maybe if you want to come back, we can just kind of talk as it's machining. Cool. Uh, cameras will go into inside the machine to catch everything. Uh, do your thing, buddy. And cool. uh, start it? Right? Yeah, go ahead okay. and start it. Cool. Take your time, take your time. Oh, that was nice. He's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, you, it's selling itself. You, you move this a lot, so when you're on this one, you bring this over here, and then when it's time to nice, machine nice. that. So, really like that. Go ahead and look at the camera. Go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about the kind of metal tooling that you're using, the speeds and the feeds. Yeah, so um, first up we have a uh, CNMG doing some roughing. It's going to be facing the part, leaving five thousandths on the face. And then I'm going to be turning across the OD, also leaving five thousandths. Um, I believe I have this one at 160 SFM, a feed rate of thousands per revolution I think cool that's uh that's just a good middle of the road for 604b titanium uh, to have success live on camera <laughs> yeah. but from there you can actually push it up yeah I think he actually took a skim cut just to make sure that we were perfect for the camera yeah so, so I've, I've already run this first face pass just to make sure that I didn't have to move it in anymore you can hear the SFM kick, kicking up the RPM so it's gonna be turning across the OD now um, I believe it was 80 thousandths, should be 80 thousandths for the depth of cut here. And then the first cut, because of the material, kind of not, it has a little bit of run out on the material. It's going to have like a uneven cut on this very first cut, but after that it's going to be dialed. So. Nice, should, nice. Should be turning across about uh, two and a half inches, maybe, maybe a little bit. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, five inches that's quite a bit <laughs> awesome so. i guess this is, this is one of the cool things right when you go to the big conventions you don't actually have like legitimate cnc machining right M materials expensive a lot of people are dry running aluminum and different things but um, because we're in our facility live on camera we can actually bring out legit technology we can actually show real machining like stuff that you can actually see with your eyes and therefore you can uh bank that information. What was that surface hook? What was that chip load? What was that tool that he actually was using? And then you can actually go and duplicate that process because it's real and you saw it with your own eyes, boom. See, we got a nice nice short chip coming off of there. So oh yeah, yeah. It's looking beautiful. So Tice, when you're, when you're machining titanium, what are you looking for? To, when you say, you just said a nice short chip. Yeah, so you know? if you have your, uh, you want to dial in your feed rate so that you don't have too long of a chip to where you know, the chip would be wrapping around the tool or the part. Yeah. 
um, you want it to break the chip very nice like this to where it's just out of the way and just coming off, coming awesome. off nice. Proud dad right now, you know. <laughs> oh. And it's funny, like two shop owners out there, you know, when Tyson started when he was young, I said it already, I put him on the lathes because I was on the mills and I knew, I never had an idea that we would be on cam. I never had an idea we'd have more than like six employees. It just wasn't even what I thought, Neither right? Neither did I. <laughs> it's been a journey. It was through, when we went through 08 and 09, and uh, at that time we had 55 employees when we laid off 40 employees and I saw the industry and I saw like machine shops out there that were running at 20, 30% of their capabilities because nobody talks to each other, right? And, and that's when I got I, an idea that, hey, if we put a camera on real applications, uh, machinists are brilliant and, and shop owners are brilliant. And if they just see it and they see the cut, then they can duplicate it and then they can open their minds. You know, we, we machine at a certain amount and we think the machine's gonna break if we double that. Well, it, what happens if you quadruple that or you go way higher? I understand that a lot of the machines can do so much more than what they've been put to, right? Because they want to be successful and, and they've, they've set a standard. And yet, what we want to do is we want to show amazing things so it can open people's eyes. I always say kind of like the matrix, like we're going to expand your mind so when you see, when you're used to running at 100 inches a minute and you think it's fast because you used to run at 30, we're going to show you 1,600 inches a minute. We're going to show you 800 inches a minute. And all of a sudden, you're going to be like, wait, it didn't break. What if I went to 200? What if I went to different things and stuff? So it's important to actually show the application on camera. And uh, besides our academy, it's just one way that we get it done. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> and Chris, you hear that? It's... It's beautiful. It, sounds, like it, just it sounds, sounds nice. It sounds real nice. We call it butter. Like it's cutting like butter. Like, oh. It's a lot. It's a better job that you're programming it and not me. That's, that's, all, I, that's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess you know I was think, thinking a little bit about it earlier, and, and when you're saying why people buy it, right? Like, you you owned a shop, you ran a shop, you knew some of the headaches that people had, right? And and how much of the, the problems that you have moving stuff from lathes to mills back exactly. to lathe scrapping stuff and the fixed, changing the st fixturing involved is crazy right exactly yeah. and, and that's the thing like with a machine like this i mean you guys are doing it your your bar stock is your is your work holding you're cutting it out of that you've got your chuck if you want to automate it you could put a bar feed on the other end and throw you know, keep throw work through the middle of it have a parts catcher on this side it's it's that done in one process, you know, that yeah, we've absolutely. been talking about. All the different ops and stuff all in one process. And this is a cool part because it actually has a lot of things going on and then uh, it's just gonna come out done. So one of the cool things about today is we're gonna actually have four live events. And in those four live events, we're going to keep machining because this is a part that's gonna take a few hours to get done. And by the end of the day, we're gonna see a completed part and we're gonna actually probably put it up on the CMM and actually talk about the inspection and uh, it's gonna be great. Again, if you guys wanna, uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna have uh, my boy Dave Cox, he's gonna come in here, he's gonna talk about how you can take advantage of the amazing deals from our partners. Uh, we also have a uh, website that has links, you can go travel around and actually uh, check it out and see the incredible things that are happening, you know. Deuce on at 25 to 30 percent. I mean, it's, that is an incredible. They've never done anything even close to that, and they're doing it for you guys right now. And uh, there's a lot of opportunities. A lot of people, like, you know, we've been through some adversity, but with adversity comes a lot of companies saying, how can we actually bring this work back? How can we control the process in-house? How can we bring in mill turns and live tooling and five axes, right? And, and now everybody's thinking about it. So with the incredible deals, we can make that possible. And then with our partnership with Ellison, with everybody else, we're going to teach you step-by-step step this, this, how to program, how to set up, how to, we program in MasterCam, but we set up here, and how to set everything up. And we're gonna go job after job after job, repetition after repetition, all materials so that this is in a mystery. It's like, oh, that's how I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be great. So I think, I think it's a good time. Right now, we're just, we're continuing to face. We'll keep the machine running. 
And at this time, I'm going to bring in my boy, Dave Cox. Dave, what's up, brother? What's up, man? How are you? Good. So, you get, this isn't a thing where I actually just go on camera and it's me. I have an incredible team. And, and we look at videos, we're a manufacturing facility. We're still shipping content. We're still inspecting content. We're, we're taking the level of expertise to the highest level. I mean, look at this, we're live on Facebook and it's a legitimate, crazy opportunity. I know, I, I get into it. But I just wanna, but with all that, I just wanna tell you, one of the guys that I lean on heavily is Dave. Uh, Dave is, re is responsible for a lot of our graphics and design and the look of everything. And uh, he's an amazing man and friend. And there you go. Dave, tell him about the deals. I can listen to him go up? on forever, but let's get to some of these deals. All right, so you guys know that this Boombastic event is like, it's legitimately insane. People haven't done this. And it's coming to you because other shows weren't happening, right? Like Titan has said. The world is changing right now, and so we have to change with it. And so what we're trying to do, bring you guys some killer deals. I'm excited because I got the best job in the world. I get to save you guys money. That's super fun, right? That's money in itself. So let's talk about these things in line, right? So Doosan Machine Tools, number one, like he said, they're doing 25 to 30% off. That's not 25 to 30% off a small amount, so you're saving a couple hundred bucks. You're saving $20,000, $80,000 on these things. Like that is significant. So to get that deal, 25 to 30% off, what you're gonna do is go to their site, right? They made a landing page specifically for this, and it's titansfordusan.com. That's gonna give you all of the terms and conditions, gonna give you all the insight that you need. You're gonna go ahead and fill out the form there. They're gonna help you get that discount, and then when you go to the site, you're gonna see the machines listed, and you're gonna understand how massive these savings are. And like you said, again, these are not some machines that they hadn't sold that they found in a warehouse, and they said, oh crap, Let's put a special on these. These are top of the line. These are best sellers and everything is in stock right now, ready to ship. So that's a huge deal. The other thing that Doosan is doing, and I wanna show you guys this. Let me go back to that for one second. Those deals, again, are just in select markets, right? So this is North and South America only. I'm so sorry, everybody across the pond, other places, maybe eventually, but right now it's North and South America. The other really cool thing that Doosan is doing, and if you guys on the cameras can follow me over here, we're gonna look at this Gerstner toolbox, tool chest. You guys know about Gerstner, you know about the quality of these things. I mean, Gerstner is a company that's been around for 114 years, okay? So 114 years in perspective, that's when the Wright brothers were making their first plane. Like that's insane to have a company around this long making tool chests, handmade, beautiful craftsmanship in Dayton, Ohio. And these guys make these custom for Doosan. And what Doosan's doing is for everybody who gets a machine, you're getting a free, Doosan, a, free <laughs> a free Gerstner toolbox with that purchase, okay? This is for a limited time. You have to go through the website to get that deal, titansfordoosan.com. The other thing is we know, and we've worked with Doosan and with Gerstner, and we know that not everybody can pull the trigger on one of these bad boys right away. So we are actually giving this Gerstner toolbox away during this show. And what's gonna happen is you go again to that website, you go to titansfordoosan.com, you fill out their form, you're automatically entered to win this specific Gerstner toolbox. Cool stuff, right? All right, so now let's talk about Metal. Like Titan said, the Metal promo right now, $41 on select end mills, that's Harvey 1TE, Harvey 3, and the Core 5 end mills. $41 in the 3 8 inch size, $56 in the half inch size, okay? You're gonna go to titansofcnc.com slash promo, and you're gonna go ahead and click on Canna Metal, and it'll take you right to that landing page where you can find that. Shunk is incredible. So Shunk is doing 20% off the Vero S and Contech packages and the THW plus Chuck. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to their promo page, that's titansofcnc.com slash promo, and they're gonna give you, uh, once you fill out the form, they're gonna give you that promo code. Now, Titan, what you don't know is, Mike is so hyped up, he came off and he goes, I talked to my guys, we want everybody to be able to try the Impact Series Claw Jaws, and so what we're gonna do is add a promo that we hadn't talked to you guys about, and this promo literally just came in. They want everybody to feel comfortable trying those uh, claw jaws that they said that for 30 days, you get them, 
for 30 days, no conditions. You don't like them, you send them back. They want you to feel comfortable using them because they do grab, all right? So that's what we got going on there. And that's it for promos. You want to tell them what's coming up next? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, so as you guys can see, the machine, thank you very much, Dave. So as you guys can see, the machine's still going. Uh, it's looking real good. So uh, in about at 11 o'clock, it's 9.38 right now. At 11 o'clock, we're going to have our next live event, and we're going to see where the application is at that time, where we're at in the machining, and we're going to continue to watch the process. At the same time, we're going to actually talk a little bit more about the machine. We're going to talk about the control, and we're actually going to talk about Mastercam, and we're going to show how Mastercam, because of you know how we programmed it, it actually made this part not easy, but uh, because we're going to teach you it, it's going to make it easy for you guys. All right, it's going to be an incredible thing. Also, Mastercam. He probably already mentioned it, but 20% off their base products. That is huge, one of the biggest discounts in, uh, Mastercam has given, and uh, we're excited that they're doing that for our trade. So if you thought about getting Mastercam, get it. And at 11 o'clock, uh, next live event, talking about programming, more machining. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Boombastic Show. Boom! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of our Boombastic Show. Uh, Tyson. Hey. Cutting some chips, cutting some <laughs> chips. So, uh, you know, during the break, we had a break of about, you know, an hour, 20 minutes. We actually uh, turned it off for a little bit, uh, made some adjustments to the cameras, some angles, and uh, just started back. And now we're actually milling with a nice big, what is it, a high feed cutter? Yep, a 7792 high feed cutter, uh, yeah, two inch. Two inch uh, face mill. Yeah, two inch face mill, high feed from Canamel, the 7792. And uh, what's your surface foot and chip load right now? I got it at um, 12, uh, 12 thousandths per uh, tooth. Okay. And then um, I think I'm going 200, about 200 SFM. 200 SFM? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, titanium, right? Every, every material has an SFM like allocated to it. So if you're actually looking like a machinist handbook, a lot of times when you look at 604V titanium, you'll see you'll be at like, you know, 175 surface foot. So 200 is actually good. Um, this, this high feed cutter can actually get after it, but we're being a little bit safe because we're live on camera and we just, you know, it's the first part in titanium on this machine. And we just want to like make sure everything's nice and smooth, but I can hear just a little rumble right there. So if I gave a little bit more feed, I would like that little harmonic you're hearing, I would actually get rid of that. And, uh, or Tyson would get rid of that. And that's awesome. One thing I'll say about milling and titanium, because if you do tricordial you know, milling or peripheral milling and you drop down and use the side of the mill, like the Harvey 3s, we can get our surface foot up to 400, 450, 500 surface foot, and you can actually see a lot of those applications in our Aerospace Academy, aerospaceacademy.com. You know, Tice, one thing I want to like uh, talk about, when running titanium, I mean, if you try, like people see us running titanium without coolant, right? I mean, they, we run aluminum without coolant because we can get away with it. But you start milling with uh, titanium without coolant, you're, you're gonna have a bundle of flames like in fire. <laughs> yeah, fire, it's gonna be crazy and stuff. So so what coolant are you actually using? Um, I'm using the Synergy 7, 7, 7, 7, 735. 735. Yep, <laughs> live on camera, see that? <laughs> Boom, <Stutter. laughs> so, you know, I mean, that, that's a great thing. So, you know, Blazer calls it the liquid tool and uh, we actually use 735 in all of our machines, um, small machines, big machines, never have no issues whatsoever. And I love it because it's a synthetic that's actually safe for the machine, which is not the normal, right? But it's safe for the machine and it's clear, right? So when I'm thinking about education, I'm thinking about filming, I wanna have something that's, that's clear that allows me to see the work piece when I'm actually you know, figuring it all out and the students need to see what they're doing. But at the same time, productivity ha is real and we gotta keep it on a high level. So, you know, the clear coolant that actually helps us machine titanium more efficiently, and that's the Synergy 735. Uh, down below, 
uh, in. There's promos on the coolant for everyone, and uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. So, right now, right now, what are you doing? You doing a hex on the part? Yep, we got a big hex around the around the part. Um, just doing uh, 25, 25 thousandths passes. Um, cool. It's pretty pretty wide hex, so it hits it in uh, three passes. Awesome, awesome. So. so Take, taking some, uh, taking the cuts. We don't have anything underneath it. We're just holding it with the chuck, uh, 25 thousandths per, nice width, and uh, yep. making it happen. Uh, it's on hey, it's, Chris, you wanna, you wanna come, in, come in? I was gonna say, it's done five of them right now, so, or it's working on the fifth one, so oh, cool. it's gonna do the sixth one pretty soon. Yeah. It's kinda like working like a fourth axis right now, so he, he, he faced it and turned it and got it all nice and now he's just taking those flats boom flipping flipping indexing making it happen sounds pretty smooth i love it yeah i absolutely yeah. love it it's great awesome it's great some real nice programming you know there. one thing I, I was i was i saw some video of a landing gear like a big old landing gear and it was awesome because it was being ran on this machine you had a steady rest it was an awkward size like way out and you guys milled like the customer, whoever milled it, did everything, was able to hold it. And um, that was an awesome part. Is, do you see a lot of parts like that, like landing gears? Like, who, what do they make on these machines? Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. With, you know, with the machines like this, they're, they're, they're flexible, right? So it, it's, not, it's not just a lathe, it's not just a mill. So you know, a lot of people think, hey, it's gotta be tubes, we've gotta do turning on this kind of stuff. But it, it's not necessarily just that, to your point. Yeah, landing gears with odd shapes, maybe that you gotta come in and use that, you know, use the true mill, that five axis mill to profile out those shapes, as well as maybe, you know, come in with a boring bar using that lower turret to come in and do the ID work on there as well. Absolutely. So that's on the big side of things. But then also on the smaller machines, I see people doing, you know, in the firearms industry, we see kind of the bolt carrier assemblies, all of that on these smaller machines. Again, begin to do that in one, one setup, one shot, one operation. Awesome. And then everything in between, the oil, gas, big pumps. If, if you can hold it in that chuck, and again, it doesn't have to be a three-jaw. Use a four-jaw chuck, a two-jaw chuck, a collet nose. However you want to hold that raw stock, as long as you can swing it in that diameter, you can machine it because you've got the flexibility of the machine. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, right now, we have two chucks in our uh, shung chuck that's on the other side. Uh, it actually has six jaws. And uh, we use soft jaws in that chuck. And one of the reasons we have six jaws is we want to kind of encompass the entire part. You don't want to like, when you have a thin walled part, you don't want to squeeze it on just a few places because then where there's no jaw, it'll actually move out, right? So we want to make sure that we have contact around the entire surface. And that's when we uh, use the six jaw. And uh, yeah, and it's cool because a little bit later today, you guys are going to see a, a transfer from chuck to chuck and we're going to machine the other side do some threads do a nice big drill you got a big drill coming through yep. there huh? inch, and a, inch and a quarter awesome awesome thanks brother cool thanks a lot mate awesome. appreciate it thank awesome. you hey you know one thing uh i want to talk about is uh programming right because you know programming is huge we want to we want to make sure that the green light stays green that we program in mastercam we perfect it we simulate it we, we just look at every little variable when it comes to programming and stuff. And I thought it would be cool to bring my boy Dylan out. Uh, Dylan is actually a friend of mine. He actually flew in for this event. Hey, what's uh, going on, guys? Boom. He, and he, he's like our problem solver. So we solve a lot of problems. And, and when we have problems that we can't solve, I'm just like, same thing, texting him late at night, whenever. I'm like, hey, what about this? And what about that? You know? and. Uh, I think it's important that we humble ourselves too because we're learning, like Tyson is learning new technology and we don't know what we don't know. And therefore, instead of reinventing the wheel, we wanna like go straight to the experts and Dylan, dude, you're just like, you're on it all the time, man. So uh, thank, thank you. you very much for all your help. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Awesome, so Master Camp, you got, you got basic mill, you got basic lathe, you got five axis, you got, so many different things going on. You got mill turn and stuff. You know, maybe can you explain just a little bit uh, to our audience, like what the, maybe not quite what the differences is, but how each one is just a different level. You have a 
foundation and you work up, maybe talk a little bit about the mill turn size. Sure, so we've got different software levels targeted at you know, different machine groups, different processes, and you know, specifically with mill turn, this is its own beast, right? If we look at this machine, you, know, you saw this this morning, you know, we've got a multi-axis milling head suspended in between two lathe spindles with a lower turret with tools in both directions on that turret. And then you've got lathe tooling in the B head you know, at different index positions, different angle orientations. So that kind of requires a different solution. You know, traditionally, you've got you know, the software product, the programming, and the post, and they're kind of standalone. And a machine like this, you, you have to combine those. You have to know what each component in this machine is doing at any one time and where it's located. So you've got to have full 3D simulation and you've got to be able to control all that motion at a programming level. So that's a really high-end product. That's a, a different kind of solution than you know, traditional five-axis machining or just a traditional lathe package. Awesome. And as uh, Tyson was saying, like it was crazy with the post, because it kind of like brought out like two different programs that are all kind of running at the same time and stuff, huh? Yeah, you have to, um, as far as the mill turn goes, you have to um, sync the two together. So when you're, like in this case, I've got a, this bottom through doing some lathe stuff. You have to tell it after that lathe op is done to start, you, you, link, you link it to the um, milling head. So you tell it when this is done, start, start the mill head. And then it'll wait the program will wait for the mill head to finish and then it'll start you know your next lathe tool when it's ready so awesome. just kind of kind of timing the two together so that they run and stay out of each other's way you know and one of the cool things too is like in mastercam we actually put the the real chucks and we put the real machine in you know we uh we tool it up and uh Therefore, we can check our clearances, we can check, you know, and watch the machining and have a lot of confidence before we actually come out to the machine and stuff. And I thought they, uh, these guys can take you through the journey of how that works a little bit and show you some of the tools coming up, like the, the drilling and the thread milling and, and all of that. Uh, I want to remind everybody, you know, one of the greatest promos ever, like Mastercam, 20% off this week um, not sure if they're going to extend it, but uh, you guys can actually go down to titansofcnc.com backslash promo, go to Mastercam, and you can actually check out this incredible promo that they're running 20% off and uh, amazing software. And one of the great things is because of our partnership for education, not just education in schools, but in machine, like, like they talk about the skills gap, right? How do we solve the skills gap? We bring education for free for everyone, not just on small machines, but on real machines that you actually run in a real environment to do high-end stuff. So we're using Mastercam to teach, you know, how to make all of these real parts step-by-step step on the mill turn, on the Minx over here, on the Puma 2600, on the five axis that we're gonna see tomorrow on all of them. We're just teaching the trade so that employers can go out, they can actually go grab people off the streets. However, if you got a good head on your shoulder, you can put them in in-house training to solve that skills gap through our academy. Boom, 20% off. I will, uh, thank you very much. And yeah, maybe you guys you, can you. actually go over here and actually talk about the program and show some simulation and stuff. Okay, sure. Well, so I got my, I have my program here, um, op A side, op B side. You can see, uh, got a lot of, a uh, lot of tool paths here. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of everything too. You've yep. got some multi-axis paths in the uh, slot areas there, and then a, a bunch of indexing paths all on the first side. So the pass we're doing right now, it's the spacing operation. And then coming up pretty soon, um, we're gonna be going back to the lathe op, facing it and uh, doing a finish pass around there. And then we're gonna start jamming a little bit more on the mill, doing finishing, roughing and finishing all these slots, popping a uh, 
popping a drill in on all of the hexes, on all the hex, oh, sorry. Um, we're gonna be popping a uh, drill into all of the hex flats and then um, thread milling them. And when that's all done, we're gonna do a chuck transfer, sending it back to the other chuck. And then we're gonna do the back side, which is gonna have threads on this end. And then we also have an ID bore, an uh, inch and a half ID bore on this side. So, yeah. So, here's the, uh, this is the post when it, for the mill turn side. Um, there's a lot to go over, I'm not, um, but it's kind of cool because like I mentioned, you have to link, you know, you have your upper, upper turret here and you have your lower turret here and you have to link the two together. Oops. You link the two together. So I told this, you know, I've got my face pass, my OD roughing pass on the first stop. And then when it's retracting at the end of the uh, roughing pass, I told it to sync it to the facing mill that's starting right now. So the program's gonna wait till this pass is all done before it starts the face mill. And then I have another one over here that's gonna wait for the face mill to finish in order to start the next lathe pass. So you time, you time the two together. And then once you have these all timed, you can run the simulation. So I think I have to actually uh, click here. Yep, so once we've layered all the intelligence of, of getting that simultaneous motion with all these different components, we launch right into the simulation where we've got everything modeled down to the sheet metal of the enclosure so that we can see exactly what the end result is gonna be before we go out to the machine. And that's really important on something where you can't visualize this kind of thing um, as easily as you could in like a, a regular five axis machine or a regular lathe. There's too many moving components. So you need the software to be able to show you that visually, what is this machine gonna do? How is the turret gonna move? How is it going to do this tool change? How is the um, head going to park? And yeah. see that all in real time. I, st I still have to model a few things with, my, with this program, but modeling the tool holders and trying to get like my milling tool, like modeling the holders that I was using on the milling tools. Um, I took a lot of measurements on those tools and tried to get them as close as I could. And it was a gigantic help trying to make sure that, you know, the side of like my uh, ball end mill, it has a pretty long shank on it making sure that shank's not gonna hit against the side of my material that the, uh, the hex wall that I'm cutting right now. Um, and then things like um, making sure that I have enough room on the backside tools that I'm not gonna hit, hit the uh, other chuck. You know, it really helps for those kinds of clearances. So we got our machine, our machine here. You can see I've got a couple of the couple of my tool holders on, uh, ah, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can see I've got my, uh, my tool holders modeled here. Um, those are the, uh, these are the uh, KM50 tool holders. So I'm using, those are the uh, KM50 tool holders from Kenna Metal. I'm using them on the lower turret. Yeah, I'll start the, uh, slow it down a little bit, start the uh, simulation here. So you see I got the, uh, the first lathe pass. This, got, this upper turret's just chilling up here, then when it's done, it's gonna bring the shell mill. And this is that pass that's running right now. So in this case, we've got plenty of clearance to the chuck, the lower turret's out of the way, and um, we don't have to worry too much, but when we, we start moving around all these components together. But you can see, you can also see like what I was talking about here and what he mentioned, um, what Dylan mentioned, 
you know, trying to get your length of your tool as close as you can, or if you can import the model of the tool, it's very, very important. Because you can see when I start getting um, close to the, uh, when I start getting close to this end, this turret gets pretty close to the, uh, to the chuck and the jaws. So I'm making sure that all of that's, making sure all of that's dialed. If it's, if you have your tool holders all dialed in your, in your program, you have less to worry about when you, when you actually run the part. Yeah, to take advantage of a simulation like this, you want to build your component library out. You know, you've got your standard tools and work holding in your shop, so you're going to model all that up and throw it in there, and that pays dividends in your programming at this stage right here. Speed this up a little bit. Now we have the lathe, lathe spindle running again. This time it's gonna finish turn the part. And then we start with the, uh, we have the end mill roughing out the, uh, we have this end mill roughing out these slots here. The Harvey one? Yeah, that's the Harvey one TE from Kenna Metal. Just taking two, two passes. Does one turns the uh, turns the C axis while the milling head is uh, turning across. And then when that's done, we're going to run a run a ball mill to finish it. Do some ball tracking. So in here, you're controlling the tilt of the tool to the walls with your C-axis orientation yep. as well. So just kind of goes, goes along the walls, steps down, um, tries to get as close to the, uh, the center as it can. Over here, we got our lathe, lathe operation running right now. <laughs> um, what are you doing? What's the lathe operation? Over here? Um, it's finishing the face right now, just started. Um, the shell mill finished, so it's going to face it and then turn across the OD. So. Got to speed this up because this, uh, there's a lot of these passes here. So here your tool t changing to the drill again? Uh, now it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna start doing the, uh, the drills for the hex. Yep. So this is the whole hole for the thread mill. Just gonna pop those in. And then we have a chamfer, chamfer, a chamfer mill coming in. Pops a uh, 40 thousandths chamfer on those holes. And then we have our thread mill. Awesome, great job guys. Yes. Home, <laughs> Master Cam. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, Master Cam, 20% off. You can actually, down below, you can go to titansofcnz.com backslash promo. You can actually go into uh, Master Cam and see all of our other partners and the promos that they're all giving. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the industry, the industry has suffered and our partners are stepping up to give huge discounts at a time where we can't go to these big conventions and stuff. So uh, 
just just shout outs to all of our partners and stuff. Uh, another one of our partners I want to do a special shout out is TMS Titanium. These guys are amazing. You know, when we were running a lot of aerospace parts and stuff, um, they were a great supplier. Um, I gave them a vision that, hey, we're going to step in and actually do something big for education for our schools, for our machine shops and different things. And they've come along as a great partner to help lift up that education. You know, each piece of titanium, I mean, we're talking thousands of dollars on some of these pieces. And uh, yeah, again, great partner, TMS Titanium. If you guys need titanium, just go to their website. You can order it right through there. And uh, Todd, the owner, they're all they're all amazing. So uh, TMS, thank you very much. And uh, with that, uh, I just want to say uh, I'm going to bring in my boy Dave one more time and uh, let him talk a little bit more about the promos. Do your thing, brother. Right on, brother. All right. So promo time once again. Today, this time, we're going to talk about Blazer. Okay, Blazer Swiss Lube. What they're doing is unheard of. It's 20% off all coolants, cutting oils, grinding oils, and EDM oils with the initial fill. This is part of their LTA package, the liquid tool analysis. So what they do is they come in, they do a free liquid tool analysis. They're gonna look at your application, the machine you're using, what your different specs are, and they're gonna help you dial that in to absolutely perfect so that your tooling, your liquid tooling, all works as planned. And they're giving you discount, like that's free. And then you get discounts on top of that when you start to order that product, right? So 20% off all the coolants, cutting oils, et cetera. 20% off cleaners and accessories. They're even talking about some mini mix, jet mix stuff in there. So definitely go and check out their deal on their site. And that's blazer.com slash boombastic. That's how you get to that. Blazer.com slash boombastic. That should be on your screen or it just was. Next up, let's talk about Mastercam, right? Mastercam's incredible. These guys really stepped up and they are un they're unlocking everything for our community just so you can see exactly how to use the program. We're teaching on that platform. So 20% off on Mastercam is no joke. And this is on all their core products, the Mastercam Educational Suite, and those things include lathe, router, design, wire, and the post, so you can actually post to your machine. So Mastercam, definitely check that one out. You're gonna get that one by going to titansofcnc.com slash promo. Next up is Kenna Metal. We mentioned this on the last episode, but it's still here. So the $41 3 8 end mills and the $56 half inch end mills on all the Harvey 3s, the Harvey 1 TEs, and the Core 5, the beasts in these different materials. So definitely check those out. Um, next, oh, one thing I want to mention about that. We haven't mentioned this yet. On Kenna Metal, that promo is so incredible because what they did is they actually teamed up with Workshop for Warriors and a dollar from every end mill is going to that program. Workshop for Warriors helps people get into that machining trade, right? It's incredible. All of our veterans, they need love. They fought for us. And so Kenna Metal's doing the right thing. They're giving a dollar per end mill that's bought back to that Workshop for Warriors program. So definitely check that out on the site, titansofcnc.com slash promo. Let's talk about Shunk as well, right? So Shunk, again, that 20% off on their Vero S contact packages and the plus chuck, the THW plus chuck that we talked about. Definitely check that out. Same link, 20% off. You know about Doosan, you know about 25 to 30% off on all these machines. We talked about the free Gerstner that's going out. If you buy a machine, if you wanna just go ahead and go and enter at their site, titansfordoosan.com, titans, plural, fordoosan.com. That's how you're gonna get entered for that free Gerstner giveaway. And when you purchase something through that link, one of the machines, you're gonna get a free Gerstner. And those things are incredible. I kinda, I might steal the one that we have here because I want that for my house. Let me talk to you also about TMS Titanium and this is the last one. TMS is an amazing partner, like Titan mentioned, helping us out with the material, making sure that we have that in hand so that we can show you exactly how to run in these hard, hard titanium materials. So what TMS has actually done is they stepped up. They're giving everybody who orders through their site a swag bag of all of their stuff. So they got face masks, neck gaiters, t-shirts, uh, stickers, all that kind of stuff. So all you gotta do is when you're placing an order at TMS Titanium at store.tmstitanium.com, use the code BOOMBASTIC in the order notes and they're gonna get you that swag bag, all right? We hope you guys take taking advantage of these offers. We worked really hard to get partners to come to the table with this stuff and really kind of stretch themselves to give you this percentage off. So that's what I got. Titan, I think you're up as far as what's coming up next. All right, thanks, all right brother. brother. Uh, so one thing, one thing, you know, we, we talk about all the promos, 
But I just want to have a sincere moment right here. And I want to let everybody know, you know, we've never done something like this. Uh, five days, 20 live feeds. It's a huge, huge, uh, just a, a task. But we were up for it because our industry needs it. And, and, our, and these deals are great for the industry. It's great for you guys. 25 to 30% off on a machine, as Dave said, is no joke, Mastercam and all that. But I want you guys to understand that although there might be a lot of sales, right, we're not taking a cut. I'm not taking a cut. We, we want the savings to go to you. We don't want to add anything to it. So we're simply the vessel that's bringing the education, that's bringing the deals, but we're not taking a cut. So please, you know, if you're looking for a machine, if you're looking for a tool, if you're looking, look at our partners, look at these deals and, uh, and understand that there's a lot of companies out there, but our partners are heroes because they stepped up and looked at manufacturing and said, hey, we need to do something about manufacturing. We need to excite our kids. We need to bring awareness. We need to like give new skills to the machinists out there and show them how to actually use high level technology. And therefore they came in community and, and partnership with us to help us give free education. People thought we were gonna charge for education. Years back, people were saying, oh, he's gonna, all of a sudden he's gonna suck you in and he's gonna charge, he's gonna charge. Never has any teacher, any machinist been charged by us for education. We do everything for free because we love this industry and we love you guys. Coming up in our next episode at one o'clock Pacific time, it's gonna be awesome because we're taking one of our, our stars here at Titans of CNC, Jacob Sanchez, a kid, a young man that actually started right down the street at Rockland High School using the academy to actually learn CNC machining. And we hired him from that program. Well, Jacob has now worked here for three or four years and he is in charge and, and programmed an amazing, you know, just a simulation of automation. We're gonna talk about like, how do you actually grab a part? How do you program the robot? Like what kind of a vice do you use in the FANUC CNC machine, the, the robo drill. What kind of vice do you need from Shunk? How do you program that vice? What type of jaws do you use? What type of jaws do you use to actually put that material, raw material into that vice? You know, and then how does the whole relationship work? So at one o'clock, we're just gonna like, it's just gonna be an awesome, like down to earth talk about automation, how it's done. And we're gonna learn a little bit about FANUC and uh, the Robo Drill. Fanuc also has 20% off the Robo Drill applications. It's an incredible deal. And again, you can see it down at titansofcnc.com slash promo. Check it out, all of our partners. Thank you so much. I will see you at one o'clock. Love you, boom. What's up everybody? This is Titan with Titans of CNC and I'm here with Mr. Jacob Sanchez. What's up, Jacob? <laughs> What's up, Ty? What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Boombastic event, episode number three. And this is going to be a great episode because we are going to talk about automation and we're going to show automation in process. And uh, we're standing in front of a robo drill with a robot hooked to it and we're gonna actually do an entire machine tending demonstration. And uh, you know, when I was looking at robots and machines, it's like I couldn't wrap my head around how everything works because I wasn't, I had never used a pneumatic vise. I'd never used certain things and grippers and all that. But when I got it on my floor and we started like working with it, we started looking at the grippers and, and thinking like CNC machinists, like how would we actually make our own fingers? And, and we thought like, hey, just like soft jaws, right? And the same thing when it comes to the vice inside the table, you know, it was like, hey, how, how should we make this? So a lot of the principles we use in CNC machining is the exact principles we actually use. And uh, Jacob, I mean, you've come a long way, right? From starting off at Rockland High School, doing the building blocks and getting it ready to go into the San Quentin prison system. I'd say I've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, people are talking about the skills gap and uh, the academy in the high school right down the street. This is where Jacob learned making the building blocks and then teaching the teacher and, and teaching other students and stuff. And we hired him right out of high school. 
and it's awesome, right? Because like a lot of the leaders at that school, they didn't think you had a future. Yeah, I wasn't one of the kids that was planned on going to college right out of high school. I wasn't that A, B kid. I was that C kid. Sorry to say that, Dad. I know you're watching. <laughs> um, but I'm here now. I've been here for three and a half years and working with the first robot cell we've had in our shop, and it's going great. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, somebody like myself, I'm a machine shop owner. I need to have confidence in my guys. And uh, Jacob is 21 years old, and uh, I got crazy confidence in this young man. Even from the start, like, he would be coming on Saturdays, and he'd be like, hey, Titan, can you come to work on a Saturday and teach me some stuff? <laughs> hey, Titan, hey, talking to my son, talking to Tyson, talking to other people and stuff. But, but you love that because he just got after it. And that is why we actually put him in charge of actually making our first basic automation cell and then helping explain it to you guys. And then we're gonna make tutorials to teach every little aspect mm -hmm. of it. So you wanna explain a little bit about what's gonna happen today? Yeah, so what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be picking up a puck from our table situated to the right of our machine, bringing it into our Robo drill, and we actually have a pneumatic vise which can open and close itself with just a little code so you don't have to go in there and tighten it down the part. And that's one of the main things when it comes to making an automation cell. You want it to do as much as you can by itself. So getting a pneumatic vise is one of the key factors to that. And once it's done with the part, it's gonna go back into the machine, take it out. It is going to place three pucks in the positions that I taught it, and it's gonna keep loading for three, and I have it stop after it's done. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, we, we're, we're grabbing the material out, then we're cleaning the vise, we're making sure everything is like absolutely precise. Today, uh, we're pulling off of a table because we actually have a, a, a crazy conveyor coming that's actually gonna bring material to the robot, and it's gonna take material away, finished parts away from the robot. So in a few weeks, you guys will see that hit our floor. Again, tutorials on all of it. And then we're gonna go application after application for our new robot academy, uh, automation academy. So, uh, you know, all this work that's being done uh, over in overseas and different places, let's actually bring that work back because of automation. And now you got people programming robots, you know, making good money. You got technicians that are, that are you know, just handling all of it. So we're bringing back jobs. We're, we're creating new jobs that are high tech and uh, we're bringing that work back, so yeah. boom. We running it? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna run it in a minute. <laughs> but first, um, again, earlier I was talking in episode number one, we got some amazing individuals here. So it is my honor to bring in Paul. He's from FANUC. He is a director of education. Come on in, Paul. <laughs> hey, Jacob. Hi, Titan. How are you? How are you, brother? Good, good to oh, see you. Nice Jacob, to great job. This bumping. Yeah, excellent awesome, job. Awesome. So, so Paul. I mean, one, one thing that stands out um, besides the machine and the technology is FANUC itself. How many schools are you guys partnered with right now? So we have over 1,300 schools across the country that, that have our products between robots, CNC, RoboDrill machines. And really it's testament to what Jacob's been able to do is, is students today need those experiences. They need to be able to see and feel and touch this equipment to understand what careers are out there. And he's done just a phenomenal job. I've had the opportunity to talk to him earlier today about this system and how he's learning about the robot integrating and loading directly to the RoboDrill machine. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is I think that um, the older generation, we hold back our kids, yeah. you know, because, because we can't wrap our heads around certain things, but these kids grew up on cell phones. They grew up with automation and problem solving and multitasking. They're always doing 20 things at a time. So when you actually let them go and actually put them in front of the machine, it's amazing how fast they adapt and just start figuring out things on their own where you're like, oh, that was all, yo, you figured that out? Like, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, you know, that's just a word to the teachers like, let the students learn and let them problem solve, let them advance and uh, it's a good thing. They can do it and they can, they, they're gonna take our entire di uh, industry to a whole new level. Um, when you look at 1,300 schools, that's 1,300 schools that you guys talk to or they actually have automation? That's 1,300 schools that have implemented and have our automation in there 
teaching students all around the country. Our, our goal with our whole education initiative is very much like yours, is, is really to get it in the student's hand, the real industry technology. Put it in their hands, let them experience, let, let them understand how this technology works. And as you mentioned, this is a whole generation of digital learners. They grew up not opening a book per se to learn. They'll, they'll learn it just by putting it in their hands and trial and error. And, uh, and, and part of our technology is really to make it more easy to use. Uh, easy, simple integration between a robot and a robo drill is an ethernet cable between those two. So now you've simplified the whole communication process of making automation work with the uh, CNC machines like yeah, this. Yeah, that's incredible. Another thing I, I promise, we promise, this is episode three and it's deals, 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 <laughs> right? The industry has suffered. We don't have the big conventions. We have gone to our partners and asked for the greatest deals for our industry, for our viewers, for our students. And uh, Fanuc has definitely delivered on RoboDrill packages. Can I yep. say packages? Absolutely. Right now. 20% off, 20% off these machines. It's an incredible deal. And they'll work with you based on the application, based on like the industry that you're gonna serve. Because it's kind of, right. it's crazy, right? These things, you can just set them up for so many yep. different, different processes. Oh yeah, extremely adaptable. It's all about speed, precision, and, and performance. We really wanna make sure that we look at the application and then configure this machine. It's very adaptable. So easy to use, adaptable for a wide range of products. Um, so it's a, it's a great package. The packages that we put together range from just a basic machine all the way through to a fully integrated robot system uh, for loading and unloading with all of the peripheral devices included in those packages. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, you know, with all those schools having robots, um, with Fanuc having their own education, uh, we are actually partnering together so that we can actually create additional curriculum to actually teach all of these teachers, all of these students how to actually, you know, let's start the machine. Let's actually go through all the fundamentals. You know, let's program, let's do the automation and just make it very simple for them so they, they figure it out and then they can just take it to another level. Again, if you want the promo, go down to titansofcnc.com backslash promo. Go look at Fanuc. While you're down there looking at Fanuc, look at all our other industry partners like Shunk and Kenna Metal. Oh, crazy Kenna Metal tools in here. But check them all out. Every single partner has amazing deals this week for the Boombastic Show. And with that, uh, Paul, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say one of the, the key things is for uh, people like Jacob is just understanding how everything works. So. His ability to get into a school and learn this, this, this is just, it's really our primary focus in working with education, but bringing that closer to all the customers that are out there. The knowledge that he has on how you operate this machine or really any CNC machine to configure it, to produce and machine this part that he did, that's really extremely valuable knowledge. The worst thing that we could have him do is stand here all day and load and unload that part. That's not value added. What's value added to a lot of these shops is getting somebody like Jacob that can just manufacture and design this part and then let the robot do the loading and unloading and move on to the next system. Whether you're doing small batch or high volume lights out 24 seven, that's what you need. Absolutely, and it's important. You know, we just came through, you know, we haven't come through yet, but you know, there's a virus, right? And there's a lot of things that have like shut us down and a lot of people have like parts being done in other countries where all of a sudden they, they, that supply has stopped and it's really hurt their companies and stuff. So we have tremendous opportunities right now and there are amazing companies that are looking to actually bring that work back to have control of that supply in your own backyard. And uh, a lot of people say, hey, robots, Titan, Titan, why are you about robots? They kill jobs and stuff. And I'll, and I'll actually challenge that. And I'll say, you know what? The job's already left. You already have 50,000, more than 50,000 companies leave, right? But now if they're using automation and robots to actually make an entire phone in another country, why can't we actually bring that automation back, put it on our own floor, automate it, and actually instead of having this, this many employees, 
you're going to have this many employees, but they're going to make good money. And they're employees that would have never been in the workforce because the work was already gone, right? So this is how we bring it back. Okay? We, have, we have countless examples of manufacturers that were losing business overseas, low-cost labor countries that have added automation, increased their capabilities, and now they're producing parts, not waiting on those parts to come in, and they're actually exporting overseas to different countries out there. So we're seeing it time and time again, manufacturing, is a, there's a resurgence in this country, and it really was, it kind of exposed some specific industries during this current COVID crisis about how important it is to manufacture here within the U.S. So we're starting to see a lot of manufacturers continuously expanding even over the last few months. That's awesome. So Paul, can you take just a, take a minute and uh, maybe talk about some of the features with this robo drill? What makes it spectacular? <laughs> it's a phenomenal machine. It's all about speed, precision, and high power. So in here, you've got 21 tool changers, a tool changer within that. We can change a tool in 0.7 seconds, and you can get from chip to chip in 1.2 seconds. So phenomenal speed. From a horsepower point of view, this is really a performance machine. You've got a 24,000 RPM spindle on there. Let's say we're tapping. We want to do rigid tapping within this. We can spool up that spindle in 0.16 seconds to tap, stop, reverse, back 1.6 seconds to back that part out. Just unbelievable. You can tap it up to 8,000 RPMs per second. So feed rates, about 20 inches per second on a feed rate on this machine. So very high performance, high precision uh, machine. And it's made for working 24 seven around the clock. A lot of the other features in here, traditional CNC screen, but we have what we call an IHMI. So it's more of an icon driven screen. So again, trying to address some of the digital learners that are focusing on how do I go to more of an icon or a, uh, ease of functioning and getting to certain screens. And then the other piece of this is really creating ease of use, is how do we make this more, the operability, the maintainability, and the automation ability within that. So I talked a little bit about that earlier. To connect a robot to the robo drill is as simple as an ethernet cable. IO is pre-configured, it already knows then that it's connected to a robot and it's safe. And in this application where the robot is loading and unloading out of here, we have a servo door. So rather than a pneumatic door that you have to wait till the door is open, get that signal and then send the robot in, as that door is opening, that robot can be moving in. As the robot's retrieving, the door is closing. Again, it's all about cycle time. It's time is money. all those little fractions of a second build up over production. And the faster that we can keep this machine cutting parts, those customers are making money. That's awesome. Thank you, brother. No problem. It's uh, great. Thank you. I appreciate all you of do. Of course. Of all course. Right, take care. Hey, and uh, in our first episode today, we actually had Mike. He's a good friend of mine, and he's from Shunk. And I'm going to invite him back in because uh, we're using Shunk grippers, and we're using a Shunk pneumatic vice. And uh, what's up, brother? Hey, back again. Boom. <laughs> Keeping you busy, right? Yeah. It's yeah. all good. So, you know. A few things that we'll talk about is like, as a CNC machine shop, you know, we have to look at how we're gonna grab that material, how we're gonna hold it, the rigidity, get everything, as Jacob mentioned, get everything seamless so you don't have to do anything. It's automated 100%. And we do that with Shunk products. And you guys are the leader, the leader in the industry. Yeah, yeah. At every trade show I go to, when I look at the, uh, the FANUC machines, uh, I see, Almost every robot has a shunk gripper on it. So I'm proud to be a part of that company yeah. who's kind of leading the industry yeah. in that. Known, known for the quality. Yeah. And again, yeah. shunk down in our promo section on our website, titansofcnc.com slash promo. Shunk has some awesome promo prices making it happen. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. How about we actually move around a little bit and maybe you can talk a little bit about the gripper, talk a little bit about the vice that we're using. And I'd love Jacob to... Maybe you can talk about like how we actually went and designed our own uh, tooling for the gripper, 3D printed it, and actually did it. Yeah, of course. It's always good actually, to prototype something. Let's go ahead and talk about the gripper itself. Sure, sure. Well, um, so I, I actually appreciated what you said earlier, um, talking about kind of you're used to working with work holding, yep. and, and then you come in and get this new technology. Well, what's funny is this technology here 
The technology inside of that gripper is the exact same as what's in that vise. So what it is, is at its core, the technology is really simple. Inside that body is just a piston that's moving vertically up and down. And when you want to open that gripper, you apply air to the open side. And when you want to close it, you apply air to the closed side. And that's it. It's just a piston that's moving vertically that's transitioning this vertical movement to a horizontal movement with the fingers. Awesome. And what's funny is the tandem vise on that machine, that was actually our first gripper. It was, it was actually a really heavy gripper, mm -hmm. but um, that tandem vise was the same technology. And that was our first gripper that we ever developed. It was one of our earliest products. And so here you can see this is our PGN uh, Plus gripper. And essentially it's just a, a two finger gripper and you can design your own jaws for it according to the workpiece, or you can purchase some kind of standard generic jaws from us. And they're, like I said, it's air to open and air to close. There's two ports. And uh, you just interface it to the end of the robot. You can see we ha kind of have this angle bracket designed on there to get that gripper in an orientation that we'd like. Um, but essentially, you just run a couple airlines to the gripper, and that's how you open and close the gripper. And you just get it all programmed and synced and, and all good. Yep. You know, when, when we got the robot, we were, I, was, I was looking at I was looking at the fingers that come with it, and every single application is different. But all of a sudden, I saw the simplicity. And like Mike said, you know, it just it opens and closes. So it's like, oh, let's actually, like, think about rigidity. Let's make them as low profile as possible and keep them down close to the gripper. And actually, and then let's actually machine actually two diameters. So, uh... Jacob went ahead and did that and designed it, and these are the first set. I'll let him explain it. So I worked with our engineer, Billy. I told him what my process was gonna be. I told him what I wanted to make happen. We're taking a two inch raw stock, which is our first diameter, our outside diameter. And I told him I'm gonna machine it, and when I finish, I'm gonna have a 1.9. So he also put another step with a 1.9 diameter so you'll see once we run the program and I go back in to grab the puck, my robot will actually go deeper because it, my robot will actually go deeper because it needs to hit that 1.9 pocket we made on the bottom. So it's a really nice process. And then I got to machine it on the DNM 5700L and it was nice to get that guy cut in two. Awesome. So we, we tested out, we actually ran jobs with the plastic and then once we knew everything was perfect went on with the aluminum and uh jacob did the same thing over here maybe we can uh can we move a camera over here to look right inside here so if, if we get this angle right here curtis can you see that can you see my hand right here here boss i'll move it no you're good Okay, go ahead and explain the um. So we also started with 3D printing these vice jaws. And once I knew that the process worked with the pneumatic vice actually closing in on my workpiece, I decided to machine it out of some aluminum on the DNM 5700L. And I wanted to keep that low profile ball track surface you see on the outside because it still is, it's a trunnion. It's a fifth axis. I want to make sure that I'll have clearances once I start dropping tools past those jaws. So that was the purpose of the ball track surface. Great. So, all right, I think, I think it's good. We can actually start cutting some chips and go through the whole process. So, a couple, couple of uh, unique things to talk about would be the sensors here. You can see this light right here, as I, it's green, that'll allow the robot to move fast. A lot of times uh, in the past we've seen there's a cage around a robot to protect humans, but the technology has actually come um, way ahead. Where at, actually now you can come right up to the robot, but as you get close, it'll turn yellow, which will go to 10% movement, or it'll turn red, which will stop the robot and it actually works very quick. You can't run into it, it will stop. So Jacob, you wanna talk a little bit about what exactly the application is, what it's gonna do, and how you're gonna get it back. Yep, sounds great. So the whole process that I wanted to make happen with this part is 
we didn't need it doing anything crazy on the machining side. I wanted to get the robot and the machine talking to each other, which Paul said is the beginning of your work cell. So what I did is I had certain signals that let the robot know when the side servo door is open and I had the machine know when the robot was inside it, maybe grabbing the workpiece, because you don't want anything starting when the other isn't ready. So once I hit the green button, it's gonna pick up the puck, open the servo door, put the uh, puck inside of our pneumatic vise, and it's all about little things, like I have little wait timers where it waits 0.5 seconds before it closes that pneumatic vise. Because the worst thing that could happen is I'm going down to put my puck and it grabs before I'm down seated all the way, or the opposite, when I'm trying to pick it up to bring it out, if it's letting go too fast, you can have some real casualties when it comes to your parts. So do we think we're ready to run the program? Absolutely. So then it's just gonna take it out and it's gonna set it over there on the table. Yep, after awesome. it's all done. I always like having my teach pendant and if we're all good to go, good? You even got to see it yet, huh? Are you excited? And so what you just saw kick on is actually an air blast that I'm gonna use for my engraving uh, along with my chamfer. I'm also gonna be utilizing that air blast towards the end so it blows any chips around my part off before I go and pick it up. Because that's another thing, you don't wanna scar anything on your gripper or on your part. You like the rapids so far? Yeah, no, it's amazing. No, I like the air. I watched the whole process because I haven't seen the area. Nice. It actually comes out of both those nozzles too. And then once it's done engraving, you'll see it do a quick little air blast around. Have you seen it pick it out either? Mm -hmm. That one's cool. And then that's the little, and then that's the air blast, making sure there's no chips around the part, and the robot's about to go back in and get it. I think that's good. Yeah, I can yeah. stop it after this part. Yeah. We'll just let it, let it, let it stop. Okay. Let it take one more out. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Paul, Mike, you wanna come right back in here? All right. Jacob, you can, you can also um, be here. So, Right, come on in. Go ahead and uh, move cameras. <laughs> Squeeze in a little bit. <laughs> yep. get, get a little, little bit of distance on us <laughs> and stuff. So anyway, great, great, great application. Uh, we saw Jacob actually grab the raw stock, put it in the vise, machined it, took it out, and the automation started by actually going to the next part, and it's continuing right now. Uh, we will have tutorials on our academy explaining exactly how to program 
all of those moves right there, the entire process. And then when we get the conveyor in, uh, we're gonna show with a lot of parts how to keep it running just hour after hour. And I'm excited to say we're gonna do some amazing five axis work on this machine also. And we're gonna keep switching up the application and uh, making it all happen. So thank right. you very thank you. much. Appreciate it. Awesome. Great job. and Great job, brother. Yep. <laughs> Great job. Right. Thank, thank you, you very much. And uh, again, I just want to like remind everybody we got crazy deals, crazy deals, 20% 20, 20 off. But I'm going to shut my mouth now and bring in my main <laughs> man, Dave Cox. Yes. We'll separate. <laughs> All right, everybody out of the way. Here comes the man. So talking about deals, you just heard the man. Fanic right now, 20% off. This is all the robo, the select FANUC Robo Drill Machining Center packages. So that includes everything in there. And there's a range, you guys. So when you go to the site and you go to titansacncom slash promo, you're gonna click the FANUC link and that's gonna take you. And you're gonna get to see this range of packages, everything from bare bones, if that's what you want, to fully machine, fully like set up, turnkey, ready to go. And remember, robots and the Robo Drill specifically, this is about freeing up your people to do more skilled processes, to make sure that they have the ability to get in there and they're not just pushing buttons, they're not just moving a part off, but this helps automate that process. And that's kind of what's lost a lot. We talk about automation, people just think, oh, it happens automatically, but they're not thinking about what that operator was doing to what they're now capable of taking on as a project. So think about that when you start to think about how can we integrate the FANUC Robo Drill or other automation into our processes what are they freed up to now do rather than standing there waiting for the machine to finish? All right, so that's this promo, 20% off. Again, it's titansacncom slash promo, and Titan is going to come back up right now. We're going to talk about what's coming up next. Here we go. Oh, all right, so it's like a marathon. We are just finishing up with our third episode. Our fourth episode will be at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and it's where we are going to finish and show the ending of the machining on our big mill turn. And at that time, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the part, we're gonna talk about the application, we're gonna show the machining, and we're gonna step in, because what happens when you finish something? It's all about the quality. And so we're gonna step into quality. We're gonna go over to our Michitoyo CMM, and we're gonna actually run a demo and talk about actually inspecting that part because the part has to be perfect before you ship it to the customer, right? So anyway, at 3 p.m., we will see you there. Thank you very much for joining the Boombastic Show. Remember, deals, deals, deals. Uh, check it out. I'm out. Boom. Uh, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC, and my son Tyson. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, so what an incredible day. And uh, for those that haven't uh, been with us yet, welcome to the Boombastic show here at Titans of CNC. Uh, we're excited because we're actually showing some really cool machining demos. And uh, if you go to the first episode this morning, this being number four, we actually went in through all the tooling. Uh, we've gone through programming and uh, we've been showing this part that we're running on the big old deuce on mill turn and uh, making it happen. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's coming out awesome, right? Yeah. Coming cool. out good. Yep, and uh, so Tyson is on his second part right now. And what is awesome is that we, in this episode, we're going to take a step away from the machining and we're gonna go over to our Michitoyo CMM and we're gonna actually talk about quality and the importance of not only perfecting the process on the machine and, and making the program just absolutely perfect, but actually taking it through the inspection process so you can actually keep yourself accountable and make sure that everything is absolutely dialed. But uh, before, uh, Tyson, maybe you can talk about where we're at in the process right now. Yeah, so we're doing some ball, we're doing some ball tracking on the part right now. We roughed it out with a 3 8 Harvey one TE end mill, 60 thou radius. So now we're opening up the 3 8 uh, slot that we did with a half with a half inch um, Harvey 3 ball mill. So it's just it starts at the top of the slot, works its way down. Um, kind of light, kind of a light yeah. cut, but yeah, it's, it's been coming out really full, nice. 
full five axis. So yep. roughing with the Harvey 1TE, coming back with a duo lock, the six flute Harvey 3, and uh, just coming in with that ball end mill and just like coming in and kissing it. So for, a, for both of these ops, these slots are at an angle. So as it's, as it's, um, as it's being machined, the C-axis is turning along with the part, so it's a cool. five-axis five motion. Awesome, awesome. And uh, after this, we're basically going to be drilling, chamfering, and thread milling. Yep, this is the last last slot we're working on, so we'll have some pretty more, much more exciting ops after this. Yeah, that's oh. awesome. There you yeah, go. There so we got like the next tool coming up. Yep. I'll let him do his thing. Now it'll be, should be drilling. We've got and this Y. Which drill is this? This is the Y-Tech drill from Kenna Metal. It's a 12 millimeter. Awesome. So one, one thing, important thing to mention is that this is 6AO4B titanium. Uh, this is a titanium that we actually machine regularly for the aerospace industry. And uh, that therefore we had a lot of industry industry experience and we thought, hey, you know what? Let's actually do it on the mill turn and then let's actually make tutorials. So in the future, not only will you see a YouTube video showing all of the machining, every single tool, every surface foot, every chip load, all of it, but you will actually also give you the setup sheets, all the instructions, everything. It'll drop on the Academy and uh, it'll be awesome. Picking up the feed ratio a little. Yeah, yeah. So what's your what's your service foot on this? Uh, I believe. You know I can't remember the surface oh. footage. I'm sorry. Um, it's at a thousand RPM right now. Cool. And then uh, we got a feed rate of three inches per minute. Awesome. Cool. And uh, one thing I want to say is like, you know, this is. Like we are bringing the, this is the industry, right? We actually went to our partners. We said, hey, our industry is actually gone, going through troubles. They've been locked down. So let's go to our partners and say, hey, let's give incredible deals. So at this time, I'd like to say, you know, Canna Metal has come out with some incredible deals. Uh, Mitchell Toil, Doosan. Doosan is at 25 to 30% off machines right now. Their top 65 models. It's an incredible deal. You can go to titansofcnc.com backslash promo to look at all the deals for all of our partners. Uh, Titans of CNC, my team, we're not taking a cut at all. It's all about giving you guys the best price so you guys can up your game and uh, give you some education to take your skills to another level. So check that out. And uh, now all the coolant, the Synergy 735 coming through that drill is... Uh, you can see it though. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Sounds like butter right there, like just, just going through. Nice. That's the through hole right now. So. Awesome. So at this time, you know, we are going to actually put this video, the entire machining process on YouTube. And again, on our academy. So I'm going to say great job to my son, Tyson. Thank you. What's up, brother? <laughs> Doing it live. His first titanium real mill turn part. And we put the cameras on live, right? What a dad. <laughs> All right, so at this time, I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna head right over here and we're gonna go to the CMM and we're gonna talk inspection. Gentlemen. How's it going, oh, hey. <clears throat> boom, um. catching my camera. What's up, Mike? <laughs> Jeremy. Boom, how are you guys doing? Great today, great. That's great, great. Yeah. that's great. So as you guys can see, we have a part on the CMM. Uh, and you know, one of the cool things is a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, Titan just walked from the mill turn and literally went 20 feet over and he's by a CMM. And yes, we do have temperature control, but usually you don't see CMMs on a shop floor, but that's the ex exciting part because this is a new style of CMM and uh, it's built for applications where you have coolant, where you have industrial things going on and you actually are able to actually perform in that place, right? That's correct. And and a couple of the, the the features of this are really, you know, this is a hunk of iron. This is cast yeah. iron. So the first thing you have to do is build for the shop floor. So we build for the shop floor by making good materials. 
The second thing we do is we build for temperature compensation. So we have real-time temperature compensation. This machine will operate from 10 to 40 C, which for everyone else is 50 degrees <laughs> to 104. And that's a really big temperature range. So we don't have to build an air conditioning unit. Saves us money, saves us time, lets us put the machine on here. We can compensate not only the axes, but also the part or the fixture. Awesome. So we have real control over the machine, okay? The next part of, of this machine is it's got to be easy to put down. Can we put it wherever we want? Yeah, it's a single 110 volt. That's it. One cord, plug in. Notice, there's no air. No sharp air. So all those things make it easy. They make it functional. They make it a shop floor machine, okay? The other part is really constructed so that you can have everything compact in one little spot. So not only is it built for the shop floor, it's got to be designed for the shop floor. So we look at the design, and if you look behind me, it's a very open design, okay? That means I can put big parts from this side, I can put long parts from this side, and then down the road, we're gonna put a robot here, and we're gonna load absolutely. the parts from that way, because the future is automation, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So lots of features and functions when we talk about build for the shop floor, stable, easy, flexible. The next part is, is design for the shop floor. Make it easy to load, easy to work on, okay? But what happens with the CMM? It's gotta be accurate. So how accurate is it? This is a 2.2 micron machine, 86 millions. Awesome. That's pretty darn good on the in this environment, okay? Yeah. It's gotta be fast, okay? This machine moves around at 24 inches a second. So it approaches speeds that machine tools do. Mm -hmm. It just happened to have a measuring head on it. Yeah. Awesome. And the last part is flexibility. What happens when you get a part that's this complex? This is not exactly, you know, the little building block from the over the thing, not to look at that, but this is a pretty complex part. So we have some real high-end technology when we're talking about the probe head. So that's an indexable probe head. It means it moves around. It also is a scanning probe head. Now this is probably on the higher end of most regular shops, so we can have a fixed probe head and a touch trigger one. So we have the gamut here, but we also have one that we certainly want to show on Titan's behalf of how good this thing can do so. Yeah, that's awesome, that's and awesome. And I think it's a great product in that regard. Yeah, I mean, Mitchell Toyo is a standard in excellence when it comes to quality control, and everybody knows that. And uh, thank you very much. You know, this time, I'm just gonna say real quick, remember what I said, machining demos, wisdom, knowledge, and deals, deals, deals. So one of the cool things is Mitchell Toyo on this CMM, and it's a reasonably priced CMM. They're giving up to $12,000 off this CMM right here for your shop floor. And they also, you have some deals up to 35% off, I believe. On our um, regular tooling. On and regular on tooling. On, yeah. on different uh, measuring. So you can actually go down to titansofcnc.com backslash promo. And you can actually go down and look at all the deals for Michitoyo, incredible measurement equipment at amazing prices just for you guys. And, uh, and check out all of our other partners. The prices are absolutely amazing. Again, we're not taking a cut. The deals are for you guys. We're doing it for the trade and boom. So let me actually introduce you now to my man, Travis, my quality manager. What's up, Travis? How you doing, brother? Oh, yeah. making it happen, right? For sure, man, yeah. Like I say, awesome. you, you can make chips, but if you don't make a part to spec, then what do you got? You know? all, those, all those aerospace days, all those light, late nights inspecting, making sure we get parts out, it's all paying off right now, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And then we have Jeremy yes, over there. How are you, man? Thanks great. for coming. Thank you. So uh, maybe you guys can talk a little bit about, you know, the process, like how to program, uh, what you guys did, the part itself and actually just, you know, tell the viewers a little bit about what you're gonna do. Yeah, for sure, Mike did a great job. Uh, Jeremy came in, we did a little programming here, so let's show you kind of what the machine can actually do in action. Oh, Put it to sleep. Uh -huh. Perfect timing. Okay, right. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we wrote, a, we wrote an inspection program uh, for this part. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it in steps and then we're gonna talk about the different uh, oh, so right to make this easy for the operators, uh, the first thing we have is our quick launcher interface. So instead of file open or anything like that, the operator just walks up, picks his part. It's a touch screen. So Travis, if you think you can. And so I like this. <laughs> I, I can't mess this up, right? It's have to match the picture to the part, right? So. <laughs> right. Picture, new part, 
sure to execute yes. All right. Find so, out if I did it right. Exactly. So this launches our repeat mode, which runs our program. Um, so it's going to go through, set our CNC parameters, load our coordinate system, and now it comes up and says, okay, uh, since we have a repeatable fixture, we don't need to do a manual alignment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a CNC alignment. It's waiting on us, so yep. go ahead and hit OK. And so I like this. It gives a, it can give the operator instructions along the way. As they exactly. Go. So really the machine's doing all the work. So uh, what we're going to do is an alignment. Uh, we're taking a four-point plane on the top to square everything up. As soon as Jeremy. this is done, yes, sir. As soon as this is done, uh, we're going to take a circle around the outside diameter. So this will align the origin. Now, as Mike said, this is an indexable probe head. Uh, so we're going to index to get to the side for clearance. And then we're going to measure along the edge of one of the hexes. And this will clock the part. So we've done a base paint for a, to square it up, circle for origin, and clock the part. Nice. And so now it moves out of the way, and, and it go ahead and stop. So now, as Mike said before, this is a scanning probe, an SP25. Um, so this is a constant contact scanning probe. Um, now we're going to scan the contour of the top edge. So go ahead and hit OK there. This really gives us quite a few points around that profile. Absolutely. Instead of just taking four points on a circle or six points on a circle, we're going to measure a little shy of 300 points nice. as we go around. So it's actually following a, a tool path from the CAD model that we've sectioned out. And we can see the points up here, right? Yes, sir. So it's measuring perpendicular to the tangent of each of those points. From the CAD model, it knows how it's measured. It's just chasing the part. Mm -hmm. So we can see it plotting the points. It looks like a white line. It's really a bunch of points all close together. As soon as it finishes, it'll come up to a clearance height. Approaching 300 points. Yep, about 288, 290, I think it finished at. Okay, so now it's measured that contour. We can compare that back to the CAD model. Yeah. Or we could cut that into individual circles and uh, do geometry on it. Okay. So uh, when you're ready, we'll go ahead and start on the hex. Okay, ready to measure hex. Let's do it. So once again, with that indexable probe head, we're going to index so that we're perpendicular to the face. So I've got some clearance moves in there so we don't smack the part. <laughs> um, the probe is actually at 150 degrees, which is perpendicular to that hex. Okay. So we're going to get good, true measurements. Nice. Now, I'm Make doing a scan around the perimeter. That's called a gasket scan. And now I'm going to go in and measure the circle. Now it's a threaded hole, so I'm chasing the threads out incrementally. So you're following that pitch kind of as right. you come out? If you don't, then you'll be shifted into the minor diameter. Yeah. So by, by chasing the threads, it stays true. Once again, gasket scan around the outside. And I got this information from the CAD model. And then go in and chase this one. I, we're chasing inside on this one. Okay, so now these were prismatic measurements, planes, circles, things like that. Easy measurements, right? Easy stuff, yeah. right? Uh, now we're going to measure the flutes. So the flutes are, I mean, you had the ball end mill going there and you're twisting around as you're moving out. It's a complex measurement. But we don't want complex results. We want mm -hmm. simple results. Is it deep enough? Or is my angle correct? So what we're going to do is we section this in three different spots and we're going to measure a scan at three different heights. So if you go ahead and hit OK. Yep. She's going to measure the first one. So from the CAD model, I defined a path. And uh, it comes in, makes contact. And then now it's going to start scanning just a section of the flute. Yeah. I can't go all the way around because I'll shank out. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to go up. I've got the same probe position because I've got a big, fat 5 millimeter uh, probe on there. And that way I won't shank out. Yeah. So it should be good. Now you're checking it in three different spots, so that'll allow sort of to see if that path deviated a little bit. I know that part's sticking out of the chuck right there, right? So you might see if it started to flex or if you started to get deflection at the top. Right, exactly. So when you first come in and make contact, everything's good and rigid. And then as you move further out to the free end of the part, it might flex on you. So that would be good information to then take, share with your machinist, let him know that he might want to alter his setup or adjust his tool path to make an accurate part. Exactly, absolutely. So the inspection finishes. Um, now it comes up, and it's kind of hard to see from that distance, but there's a little green OK in the top corner, uh, which means that the part has finished and it is acceptable, and either it would print the results or send it up to your statistical collection software, yeah. whatever you're using. So if we, if we wanted to know, that's good, we're OK, but let's say I was chasing a true position. I knew I kind of had to shift it a little bit or something. We can go ahead and have results print out that lets us know exactly where that is. Exactly, and we can actually program it so that if everything is good, it doesn't print out anything. Yeah, OK. And if something's bad, it will print out the bad features. Nice. So instead of looking at a 300 rep uh, feature report, you're looking at the two things that were bad. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot easier. And then if nothing is on the report, it'll say, all good. 
you take that, you're good to go. All the data's in the yeah. in your database. Nice, so a lot of versatility, right? From the yes, basic sir. all the way up to the complex 3D. Absolutely. Very nice. What's up, man? Great job, yeah, man, right. great job. Thank you. Boom. Wasn't that awesome? So uh, the part is complete. And uh, again, on this specific part right here, made out of 604B titanium, we're gonna make a YouTube video where we show the entire application, giving every single can of metal tool, every service foot, every chip load, we're gonna make it happen. And uh, that will be coming soon. Uh, one of the exciting things is tomorrow, we're gonna actually be on our five axis right here. And uh, we got an amazing part on the DVF 6500, <laughs> Stuart's working on, like, he was here till like midnight last night. He's working on it right now and uh, all the pressure's on him because uh, tomorrow, lights, camera, action, 9 a.m., we're gonna make it happen. And uh, at the end of the day, we're gonna have it over here and we're gonna be working on some inspection. Like how do you actually inspect this complicated five axis part? And uh, it's gonna be amazing. So thank you very much. You. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, before we go, we're gonna bring in Mr. Dave Cox, and he's going to talk to you guys about all the deals, deals, deals. Boom. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time to save some money. Let's do it. We've already heard stories today about people saving thousands and thousands of dollars by taking these deals into account and actually jumping on these promos. So what I want to talk to you about right now is Mitch Atoyo. Since I'm standing in front of the machine, this thing right here, the 555 MyStar is up to $12,000 off. Up to $12,000 off, that's insane. That's like a, a gently used Kia. That's 12,000 tacos on Taco Tuesday. You know I like Taco Tuesday. So 12 grand off, that's insane. That's the thing you wanna go ahead and get for your shop floor so you can just go from machine straight to inspection and get back to machining. So $12,000 off on that. 30, up to 35% off on their precision tools. That's all your calipers, that's height gauges, that's everything that they have in that list. And the way you wanna get that deal is go to titansofcnc.com slash promo. All right? And that's the last time I'm gonna tell you about it today, so you better go quick. The other thing I wanna remind you about is Doosan. That 25 to 30% off is no joke. That's insane. Again, titansfordoosan.com is where you're gonna find those deals. You sign up, they send you the link, everything's taken care of. And that's off 65 of their different models, right? So that's horizontal mills, vertical mills, lathes, all that kind of stuff. The other thing you need to remember is they have that Gerstner giveaway, okay? So there's two ways to get your free Gerstner. One, just buy a machine, super simple. Pull out the checkbook, pull out the credit card, get those airline miles and get a machine, get your Gerstner, okay? Just do that. Second is you go ahead and sign up at the site and you're gonna be entered to win our Gerstner that we have here on site. That's a killer deal. Next up, let's talk about can of metal, all right? Let's remind you guys that those end mills are on sale. The 3 8 for $41, the half inch for $56. That's your Harvey 3s, your Harvey 1 TEs, your Core 5, and a dollar from every end mill goes to the Wounded Warrior Project to help our veterans, all right? So remember that, that's a killer deal right there. With Blazer, we wanna remind you guys about the LTA package, that's the liquid tool analysis. That's a free liquid tool analysis. And when you do that, they have 20% off, off of their liquids, their coolants, their cutting oils, grinding oils, all that kind of stuff for your initial fill and 20% off for accessories and cleaners. So don't forget that one, don't pass it up. That's gonna be at blazer.com slash boombastic. That's a little bit of a different link than the other ones. Blazer.com slash boombastic. Let's revisit Shunk for a second. So Shunk has their 20% off for the Vero S and the Contech packages and the THW Plus Chuck. Remember, that's 20% off. And if you remember, Mike Gantz came back in and he was like, hey, Dave, you got to tell them we're going to do the Impact Series Claw Jaws. And if there's anything that they don't like about them, they can send them right back. So that's unconditional guarantee. I believe it's 30 days. So just try them, get them, and then send them back. That's at titansofcnc.com slash promo. Whew. You guys warm? Because I'm warm. All right. Next up, TMS Titanium. Remember, these guys are helping us out, give you guys education. They're giving us the amazing material that we use to teach on. And that TMS Titanium deal is a free swag bag when you order with them. So it's just store.tmstitanium.com. And then use the code BOOMBASTIC in the order notes. They're going to give you a pretty insane swag bag. That's awesome. Mastercam's doing 20% off. 
All right, so that's all their Mastercam core products. Titansofcnc.com, again, slash promo. And that includes their mill, lathe, router, design, wire, mill turn, and Mastercam for SolidWorks. That's a killer deal. Fanic, we talked about the Robo Drill already. Don't forget, 20% off a Robo Drill. That's lights out automation. That's the whole thing set up, any package you want. That's from bare bones all the way to insane mode, 20% off. You just gotta go to the site. Again, titansofcnc.com slash promo. Scroll down to Fanic, hit that button, and it's gonna take you right to see all of those different packages you can have, cool? All right. And that's it for those promos, but next up, tomorrow when we kick things off, here's what we need you to do. We need you guys to all be on there watching again because we're gonna kick things off with an absolute giveaway, perfectly free giveaway in the first episode tomorrow. So that's happening and Heimer is also tomorrow. That's coming up. Now you guys, Heimer came in, I mean, I don't know if I can even tell you about this, but it's insane what you're gonna see. I mean, this, just trust me, you're gonna wanna see this Heimer setup that we have, all the, I mean, it's just crazy. So come back and visit us tomorrow. Tell your friends, we're gonna do a giveaway. And that's it for today. Thanks for enjoying us with uh, all four episodes today. We will see you tomorrow.